Hello. Yes, it's me. It's me. I'm the problem. It's me. Do you remember me? Of course you do. How could you forget? Because whether you love me or you hate me, you, you know, best thing going on this website. I'm sorry. It's been a while. I know I did a couple of live streams. And uh, the last one, unfortunately, was not what it was meant to be. It started off great, did the first hour, and then unfortunately, uh, due to technical issues beyond my control, um, all as always, as they always are, uh, I had to I had to call it uh, I call it a day. I will return to that in due time. But I just need to get a video out. It's been too long, and I'm getting a bit as you can see, I'm getting a bit antsy, a little bit. <laughs> and so I thought I would pick one of my favourites from this year, uh, one of my favourite videos. And I, I, it, some of you out there, I'm sure. I have probably, like myself, got into the uh, these uh, these channels that have uh, come about in the last few years of police interrogations and uh, body cam footage. It's fascinating, especially for someone like me, and probably for a lot of my audience, to find yourself in a position where you all too often are sat there going, I've never supported the police in my life. Some of these fuckers you sit there and you want to sponsor the bastards. But of all the police interrogation videos that I have seen over the last few years, none of them, none of them uh, have come close to the one I'm going to show you today. And the person I'm and the person in it, she has huge potential superstar. Uh, you know, she she she's got she could be the next she could be the next evil bastard. She in another life she would have been like Elizabeth Holmes or someone or even Eileen Wernos, but. Fortunately for us, she only managed to get a little bit close to the death toll that those two did. Now, many years ago, I say many years ago, a couple of years ago, some of you, uh, if, if you've been following my channel, will be all too familiar with one of my, one of the worst human beings I've ever covered before on my channel. Also, one of my all-time heroes and legends, Bell Gibson. And if you're familiar with Bell Gibson, either through my videos or somewhere else, I want you to sort of keep this in mind because this is going to be a big video. The it's, the interrogation alone is two hours long, and then you've got me in between. We could be here for fucking till well the end of time, okay? So, but I've got a question. The question I'm going to pose to you. Uh, there's two questions. One, are you going to give this video a like, comment, subscribe, and then support me on Patreon? Yes. And the second question is, who is worse, Bell Gibson or Sarah Boone? Now, before we get into the actual interrogation video, I'm going to try and give you as concisely and as, as you know, covering all the bases as possible, a, a, a sort of overview of Sarah Boone Law. What she's doing, what she did, what she might have done, she did, and where we go from here. But then we get to the interrogation. So here's how we got to this point. On February 25th, 2020, Sarah Boone, then 42, was arrested by Orange County, of course it's in Florida, this deputies, uh, after detectives said the uh, that 42 year old, Jorge Torres Jr. died after being zipped in into a suitcase and left inside for hours. The incident reportedly happened at the uh, couple's Winter Park home near, uh, near Aloma Avenue and Golden Rod Road. According to investigators, Boone told them that she and Torres had been drinking wine and playing hide-and-seek the day before. Yes, that was her line. He is in a suitcase that zipped up because they were drunk and thought, hey, we're 42 years old, we're drunk, we're a couple who've, who've lived together, what shall we do to pass the time? Let's play hide and seek. Sarah Boone claims that after Jorge had got into the suitcase, she had gone upstairs and had passed out on the bed asleep. She said then that she woke up several hours later to find her cell phone had been ringing multiple times. At this point, she had her Home Alone 3 moment, Oh, hey! And uh, then she reportedly realised that her boyfriend was possibly still inside the suitcase. She ran downstairs, unzipped it, and there she found Torres unresponsive and not breathing. I think those are both technically the same thing, yeah. Boone called 911 and deputies arrived to find Torres dead. 
Now you you might want to get now there is also, there, there is some preliminary footage on the day that was made. It's about forty minutes long. Where you get a bit of an idea, you get a rough, you get glimpses into who Sarah Boone is on that day. But you don't get the full you don't get the full full on Boone attack. You are about to enter the Booneverse, right? Boone Boone shake the room. Okay, you ready? Boone Dog is taking us to Boone Town on the Boone train. Okay, now it's very important to keep in mind. You might also want to listen to the nine one one call where you hear someone who is not exactly how I'd say, doesn't exactly sound like someone who's just discovered that their partner has died of asphyxiation and is purple in a suitcase. Right? Now, this, uh, so what you've just heard there, this is the story, and it's because this is important, this is the thing about police interrogations, that is, the thing that makes them so fascinating is watching the person being interrogated who has, you know, who's got to lie their ass off and the police already know stuff that they don't know they know. And they're about to find out they know that they know. But the great thing about this one is you're going to find out and know that Sarah Boone knew the stuff that she th that they, they knew that they knew that she didn't know, but she did know. And also prepare yourself for one of one, someone who is without doubt the most narcissistic human being I've you've ever heard in your honestly I just don't it's like it's like Piers Morgan and Fred Durst got into a pod from the fly and they came out and had a gender reassignment surgery and out comes Sarah Boone who is now so she's 42 years old she is an alcoholic she has a son she has a son who's nine years old who she has joint custody with her ex-husband and, and she's living with a guy called Jorge Torres Jr., who she's been with for three years. He's also an alcoholic and a fucking loser and a degenerate. She, she's completely, she's a complete fuck up all, on every level, right? To the point where I can even say that in a condescending way, right? And not only that, right? It's also important context. These two have a classic, Jorge and, uh, Jorge and, hey, the whore, uh, uh, Sarah, have a classic toxic cycle relationship they get back together they get fucking drunk they get they fight each other they both been arrested for uh, on domestic violence charges um i think they've both even spent time in prison and so we're at this point now so on sunday they play they're drunk they're playing hide and seek george gets in the suitcase sarah ends up passing out of drunk sarah finds george the next day Sarah calls the police. Sarah tells the police, hey, we were drunk, we were mucking around, we were having a laugh, we, you know, we decided to play hide and seek, I passed out, we find, I find him dead in a suitcase. Right? That's the line, that's the story, and that is where we go into this, the greatest ever fucking police interrogation video of all time. <sighs> Keep the faith, strap in, let's do it. Appreciate you coming in. Yes, ma'am. There she is. Right, just to give you a quick survey here, uh, the on the uh, left-hand side of the picture uh, that you're looking at, you've got uh, the two pigs there. Um, they're the good ones. You'll notice them. Uh, one of them's dressed as a hemorrhoid. That's very nice of him. I love the fact he's gone for just a bright magenta shirt. Uh, then the female police officer, she's great. And then uh, top right-hand corner, there she is. You can only see her back for now. That's all you deserve. She hasn't got, you know, she's a skinny, bony ass little bastard. Be like, like most degenerate junk junkies are at their age. Uh, that is the boon. Boon dog, you know, boon, boon, shake the room. You know, and all the other types of boom shakalaka and many other puns I've got to think of while we're on this little journey. Anyway, let's crack on. Can I, I want to ask you about these whenever we have a moment? Sure. Um, so obviously, um, he received his autopsy. So I'm going to read you your rights again because I, we have to talk about that. And since I'm talking about the incident, we just have to do it, just like we did yesterday. Protocol. Just okay. like we did yesterday. Remember I read you the rights? Yeah. Your rights? Yeah. So it's the exact same thing, but since I'm asking you follow-up questions, I need to read them to you, okay? Sure. Now, I'm not a legal expert, folks, but if you have been the only person in a building with someone else you were close to when they died in a very unusual way that could have almost not possibly been done on their own, and they bring you in for a chat and they have to make sure they read you their rights again just to be sure you're the suspect. 
Alright, so you have the right to remain silent. I can tell you this, as, even though we, we all t we've all heard the rights that you get read, you Miranda rights and such, believe me, there is no human being on earth who really, 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 really needs to have the value and the worth of you have the right to remain silent than the boondog. Boondocker. Captain Boone. Anything you say may be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning without charge. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one can be provided for you before questioning without charge. Has anyone threatened you or promised you anything to get you to talk to me? No. Yeah, I I'm perfectly willing to believe that. There is not a single... You don't need to threaten or... You this woman requires zero incentive, motivation or anything in order to get her to talk to someone. If there's a fucking human being somewhere, anywhere, something that looks like a human being, she will babble on at the motherfucker till they're, till they're blue in the fucking... As, as long as their ass points south. And do you understand what I just read you? Yes. Spoiler, she doesn't understand what she's written. I think the things that you, so this woman understands go beyond, you know, are, are, are not quantifiable in any kind of un, you know, meaningful sense. Perfect. Okay. So, this morning we went to his autopsy, um, and we were informed of some injuries that he has uh, by the doctor. S some injuries, yes. He was tied up into a fucking double reef knot into a suitcase. We're going to call it Reef Knot Syndrome. He's, he's, he was asphyxiated in a suitcase. How does that happen? You know, imagine that. It's just, it's, in, it's injuries. Damn right, he had his head up his ass. So, I want um, So he's got <coughs> scratch marks to his back. I know what that's about. Oh, hell yeah. I bet you do. Dirty. Personally, I think that she should have carried on with that line of argumentation, like everything. Yes, he's, uh, all of his, his, his femurs were shattered in 74 different places. His ears had been removed. Uh, he now had, his face was now on 75% a different angle, right? His, his, his nipples had fallen out through his anus. His buttocks had been removed. Yes, all sex. It was all just, you know, uh, you know, it, it's what he's into, you know. You know, you, you go tell him. I, I can't say anything. It's kink shaming. Okay. And um, it's called a contusion. Do you know what a contusion is? Yes. A contusion is a bit like a bruise, but it's a little bit more unsure of what's going on. So, like, basically you're getting hit, and then, you know, you, you, you get a mark from it. You'll get bruising. <laughs> Sorry, could she have sung, could she have done that, dumbed that down any further? You know, like when something else hits you really hard and then your your skin sort of like gradually changes a bit cut bruising yeah just say bruising what do you think have you ever seen a banana sarah have you ever seen a banana that's not too that looks a little bit off yeah like some, okay. someone hit you or something like mm -hmm. that it's called a, a contusion so he had some injuries to his left shoulder um he had um he had a cut near his like lip we could see we could see his um, his mouth was a little... Uh, I haven't laid a hand on him. Right, okay, folks. She's finally spoken. She said, I never laid a hand on him. Right? Now, I think you can see where this is going. Now, for the, the first 20 minutes of this fucking, uh, this, um, uh, interrogation, it's probably even less than that. It's really... you got to remember, Sarah Boone, in her mind, and you will, by the end of this, really, really be, you know, wondering what it is like up there. Right? In her mind, she... Is, oh, at the moment, this was just an accident that happened between, you know, n nothing, n nothing, you know, just one of those things, silly, p silly drunk people making silly drunk decisions, and, it, and by the way, again, Florida, right, but at this moment, she thinks she's scot-free, so she's like, didn't lay a hand on him, right, so, in, so, and because Sarah Boone's one of those people who has to remind everyone how brilliant she is, right, if she'd have had bollocks, she would have been a, a, another alpha male, wonderful human being. But she's now going to... She doesn't know that they know that they know, but she should know, because the reason they know is because she knew, but she forgot that she knew. So, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. I, <coughs> also, too, I, he fell off my son's bike. Her son, by the way, is nine years old, and she fell off his bike. Are there anything else? Anything else you did? You know, did you get nappy rash or something? Did you choke on a rusk? 
Did you not get the bottle of milk hot enough? What what else did you... Stop playing with fucking stupid shit. Just go back to drinking. Okay, so I don't know. And he's notorious for running into the wall. <laughs> that's, a, that's a wonderful sentence. He is notorious for running into the wall. That's his thing. Every now and again, you'll just see notorious. <laughs> no. It's um, it's just you know, it's just that's his, that's his thing. You know, some people they've got you know they have a certain hairstyle or a, a fashion look, maybe a scar. He just goes full on, hardcore, straight in into brick walls. Right, legend. Or the hall tree. So I. Sarah is also one of these people who does a lot of this. Everything's got like. She's, she's the most, she's so overperformative because she's overcompensating. You know, so everything's all like, you, you, you. Okay, what, what about the scratches? Sarah, is there's also sex? I'm not going to keep going back, I'm not going to play it back because it's going to be long enough as it is, but what she did was she went, she went about the scratches and Sarah went, sex. Like, in the most, like, no, I've never heard, I've never heard a woman that disappointed after sex, you know? Well, I'm, they're never normally awake when I've left, but, you know, that was just like, and the, and the, the other one went, sex? Yeah. There should, be a, there should be some sort of serial killer or attacker who only scratches people's backs, because it seems to be one of those excuses that everyone's going to take it. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, you know what you've been up to. All these scratches down your back, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, on, and, on your, and in your anus, yes, yeah, spitting, f fingering Edward Scissorhands again, were you? Okay, because there's also like a like a scratch on like the back of his neck, like kind of like going, but it's like going straight across. Yeah, there was a, there was a scratch on the back of it. Oh, and one more thing, he was inside a suitcase all night. Can we just can we just sort of like make sure that that's remembered here? He died in a suitcase, right? And so, so yeah, he also, he had a bit of a fucking, he had a bit of a, a, a cold sore on his lip, and I think he had athlete's foot. He was in a fucking suitcase! You know. I have no idea what that's from. <clears throat> and they're all recent, like, they, they, they occurred recently, it wasn't something that occurred post, or that occurred a week ago, or two days ago, three days ago, they definitely occurred, you know, the night leading up. We know this, we saw them, they've got a date on them, we found a picture of you, Sarah, standing next to the cuts, saying, I did this, I guess I'm glad I killed the bastard, right, with a picture of today's newspaper. So when he was... In all honesty? All honesty. In, in, in all honesty, right, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be completely honest with you here. Don't say that to the police. Don't say that. Don't say I'm going to be in all honesty, right? I'm not going to bullshit you, right? Don't. Do it. But this girl had this woman has the mind of a child, and she has the child's argumentation of the you know this this just the pouty looks and all of the I swear, I swear on my mother, I swear cross it, you know, cross my fingers, cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye, right? George had one of them as well. His other eye. We have not gotten into it. <laughs> we had not gotten into it. I think you'll find, Sarah, the reason George is no longer alive is because he definitely got into it, right? I love the way she said also, when people say getting into it, she means having a fight. I don't know, I love that it's just like a default in this relationship, that if you end, if we, if, if we have a little bit of an argument, could be anything, leaves the toilet seat up, stands near me, breathes, you know, has a cardiovascular system that transfers protein into muscle energy, winds me up, and we're, next thing you know, we're ripping each other's skin off. Okay. That's why, like, the only thing I thought you guys were going to ask me about, which I was going to be honest with you anyway, are the scratch marks when it's back. Also, slightly another bad idea, never try and preempt what the coppers are going to ask you about. I thought you might want to ask me uh, about, that, about, that, about that, this thing here. I thought you might want to ask me about, you know, this 42-page this confession that I wrote with a quill and parchment in George's blood. You know, that basically, that, you know, summed up saying, yes, it was me, and I'm glad I killed the bastard, I'd do it again, fuck him and his suitcase-shaped head, you know. Don't ever do that. Let the police, silence, get a lawyer, lawyer the fuck up. Get a nerd. Mm -hmm. Everything else, I have no idea what it is. No idea. What well, well, you do, Sarah. It's, it's you know, because George is the is well known as the Floridian wall runner, right? He is the notorious fucking. He is the notorious W A L. You know, 
That's what he does. You know, he just can't help running. You know, he's like fucking Wiley Coyote. Nonetheless, I've had my son over the house too. So... Oh, they're happy, Sarah. You've had your son there. Well, that's reassuring, right? So you've got a you've got a boyfriend who gets drunk, ends up in a suitcase, gets covered in scratches. We don't know where they are, right? And and ends up dead, right? And your son was there. He was fine, right? Well, maybe your son was fine because he wanted to go out and ride on his bike, but he couldn't because fucking, you know, the Mexican Mr. Bean who you dated, Mr. Beaner, I suppose, be, suppose you'd be called. I don't know if that's offensive. It's too late. I've said it now. It's out there, right? I'll have to. I'll just have to be careful. I hope you're not noticed. But I've said. I've uploaded it now, right? So I'm gonna have to own that. Well, your son was there. When? When was he last there? Oh gosh. Last my week? understanding, he was there like last Tuesday. Last, I don't know if it was Tuesday, but yes, he was there last yeah, week. Last being the operative word there. He was there last week, last Tuesday. That and that will be the last Tuesday. In the, I like the fact she doesn't remember. Right? Again, doesn't remember. She has her son one day a week. One day a week. Cannot remember. Right? So. Well, we're talking about Sunday. Yeah. We're, making, we're just talking about what occurred Sunday. Yeah, yeah, Sunday. So, do you remember Sunday? That was the day, uh, it was literally about 36 hours ago. It's when the guy you were dating ended up in a suitcase dead, right? We're going to we're gonna really hone in on that one. That's the main sort of body. We can discuss peripheries. We can see what happened. I, I, you know, we discuss what happened the few days before. But right now... Our main goal is how did this human being get inside that and then stop breathing? If you have any information on that, please pop it in our fucking cubby hole. Because like I said, the injuries are, they occurred within that time period. So you're talking about day before yesterday? Sunday leading into Monday. You right. called us yesterday at 1, so, but the incident, you guys were painting and stuff the night prior. Correct. So, we're talking about Sunday? Yeah, yeah. what just happened there is she had to spend 30 seconds, yet again, explaining to Sarah, even more slowly and in more detail, that Sunday, what day it is, what day is it today? She doesn't know when her son was there last week, she, doesn't, she can't remember what day it is now, and she can't remember what happened, what, what day was it? Was it yesterday that George was dead, or was it the day before that? Oh God, everything moves so quickly these days, don't you find? And that's why I'm thoroughly confused, because <coughs> we had a good time mm -hmm. sitting on the back porch, having wine, and smoking a couple of cigarettes, and then decided to go inside and literally paint, do puzzles and play. Yeah, you know, that's all it was. That's all that happened. It was the. It was such a good day. We were sat there. She makes it sound. Then she does. She's what she's describing is a bunch of fucking scummy, degenerate fucking winos getting pissed out of their brains in their shitty little neighbourhood. This fucking probably fucking two dollars for a fucking three hundred gallons fucking piss that, that she's got from the petrol station right at two, at two in a bastard morning that you could polish submarines with. It's fucking. It's probably not even wine. She's mixed it with brass polish, and they're sat there. Oh yes, we were sat there on the porch, looking out of the veranda, sipping Sancerre, and and discussing and discussing the uh, the the, ba the battle of the you know Napoleon of Waterloo, and then uh, having having discussed that, we then smoke we then smoked a Galois and sashayed around the place, you know, naked from the waist down because we're free like that. Then we decided, oh, let us live our lives in more. Then we went into the house where we then we then uh, painted, did puzzles, and play. Yes, it was a what. Did where do you live in a fucking renaissance fair? Puzzle and play. And she says the word play multiple times. So it's all she's talking about when she brings up hide and seek. We're going to do puzzles, paint and play. Right? The triple P. It's Sunday. It's triple P day. It's PPP. And we're, do we're doing it. And, you know, get a fucking TV. Right? Anything. P puzzles and play. God almighty. It's like a fucking... It's what they do with old people once, you know, when they've got no free time. Mm -hmm. And listen to music. That's why nobody got out of sorts. That, this is what's mind blowing to me. Like, nobody got out of sorts. No one. You know, no, nobody got. George got out of sorts. George got into a different sort. Nothing, nothing, it was just one of those, it was just a great day, that's all it was. We, I literally went to bed humming the song, Best Day Ever, by One Direction. Go, you know, thinking, oh, bro, what, this is, is this the best, and we stood out, I remember the last thing I said to George as we gazed out at the sunset, was, you know what, George, I think from now on everything's going to be okay. And then, I, and then all this shit happened, and I don't, don't know, and I don't understand it. It's bizarre. Because why would you two having a fight result in this? 
or having an argument. It's just mental. I don't, okay. I have no clue. Nobody laid a hand on anybody. He also had, um, like on the left side of his forehead, he had basically bruising. Um, and um, on like his head and his skull. Oh, bruising on his head and on his skull. Right. Can you? I, personally, I wish they would tone down the medical jargon here because this is far too advanced for me. And to be fair, it's definitely too advanced for for Sarah. But, um... I have no idea. As if something hit him. I consider have not force touched him. Trauma. I have not touched him. <clears throat> I have not touched him. Just so you know, even though this even though this interrogation is two hours long, it would probably be about seventeen minutes if you removed every time Sarah Boone repeats herself over and over and over and over again. But she has not touched him. She didn't answer the question. The question was, do you know how he got those bruises? She said she didn't touch him. Now technically, you know, when we find out later how he got those bruises, she's not completely t you know being dishonest um he got those bruises because after she put him in the suitcase at some one point she pushed him in the suitcase down a flight of stairs and so that's where all of those bruises come from you know um, unless of course in, whilst he was inside the suitcase he was doing some skateboarding but so so when she says she didn't lay a hand on him she technically didn't she just took this suitcase that happened to have George in it and then pushed it not George down the suitcase the fact that George was inside the suitcase when it fell down the stairs is completely in coincidental and thereby inadmissible your honor then how would you get those injuries tell me and we'll both know I have not touched him Yesterday, when we took photographs of your overall body, um, and they did the buccal swabs, did they go under your fingernails? No. Okay. Are you willing to let us? Absolutely. Swab. She's a little bit over keen now. Unless she puts her hand out, go. You want to check my fingernails? Fucking go for it, bitch. Go on. Go on. Look under. I've got nothing to hide. Actually, Sarah, the reason you think you've got nothing to hide is because you're so drunk all the time. You never remember half the shit you've done. Again, foreshadow. Underneath your fingernails. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea, and I don't want to seem out of sorts, but I have no idea. I, I love the way she says, I have no idea, no clue, 17 times, and then says, I don't want to seem out of sorts, but I have no idea. Normally, if you knew me, if you saw me every day, I have millions of ideas. I'm just, I, I know everything. This is literally the first time ever in my life something has happened, and it, I don't know. So, hey, check my fingernails. You want a cavity search? Fucking go for it. You know. We had a good day. Mm -hmm. It was a good day. We've had good days lately. But we've had good days. We've had good days. I'll tell you what, do you know how they know they're good days? Because neither of them used their AKs. And if that isn't the standard that was set many years ago, then I don't know what is. Of course, you're, you would wonder, like, you know, does a good day always end with someone mysteriously ending up in a suitcase dead? Um, I hope so. You know, that would be, put, keeps you on your toes, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Even considering everything that's going on with our jobs and life in general and ex-wives and everything. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I, th I think from now on, if nothing else, the problem with, you know, what's going on in your life has been solved for George for quite a while. Unless, of course, you consider being dead a problem. Um, but and I've never asked one of them. It's been good. Like, I don't even know where this is coming from. I don't know where this is coming from. She says it like it's his, like him being dead is, a, is him just having a bad attitude. For God's sake, George, we're having a lovely time and there you go and just not, not be alive anymore. You know, selfish bastard. <laughs> yeah, I don't even the know. last physical was probably, you said, I think, what, a month ago? Mm. Where you got the injury? Right? You said that was a few weeks, give or take. <laughs> what a standard. Our relationship has been going brilliant. We've, it's been great. He hasn't fucking punched me in the face for at least oh, three weeks now. You know? It's amazing. You know, sometimes we, you know, we nearly went a whole month. You know, What a great relationship. Yeah, a few weeks. That was the last like physical altercation between the two of you? Um... Uh, uh, let me think. She had to think. She wasn't sure. She had to make sure that whether there had been any more in between then. Of course, there is. there was last Sunday when they thought in the Thunderdome, of course, live on pay-per-view. Jesus Christ almighty. Don King didn't have as many fights as this woman. Yeah, he said a month ago he hit you with a curtain rod. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not right. He hit her with a curtain rod. 
that's mu that's amazing because I'm assuming the curtain rod was actually being used at the time. And he looked around and thought, right, I've got to smack this bitch. Fuck it. And just, and just pulled the curtains down, you know. So thus exposing, the, you know, their violence to the neighbours, who I'm sure sit there every night with a fucking bag of popcorn, some sucking you know, glasses, and I've got ten quid on Sarah. Go on. Who's taking bets? Yeah, that's right. That's why I can't believe you guys didn't take that either. <laughs> like, we've been good. I don't know if, like... We've been good, apart from you know, the incident of a couple of weeks ago when he battered the shit out of me and shoved a curtain rod up my ass. Other than that, minor quibble, you know? It's since the last time he got out of jail. Like, we've been good, and he's been having his classes... Mm -hmm. And his, seeing his probation officer, who's amazing. So. What do you mean by good? What's your definition of good? The probation you, officer. Oh no. You Okay. In case you missed that, she said, like, he said, what's your definition of good? And she went, what, the probation officer? As if, like, he was asking whether she thought the probation officer was good. And then she naturally didn't question why he would ask that. She thought, oh, what, what, I, what do I think a good probation officer is? Uh, let's see. Well, the last one was not very good because George kept ending up back in prison, you know. And, uh, he, and he violated his, par his parole constantly. But the probation officer did not give a shit, you know. Pro oh god, he's been, he's been taking his cl classes in what? You know, I bet he'd wish he'd fucking practiced escapism. God, the, imagine that. That would be the old the Sarah Boone escape room. Christ, that would be a, that. That would fucking do some tickets. You said you guys have been good. What's your definition? I've been good. I don't yeah. think you all understand. He comes at me all the time. Oh, oh, she's already shifted it now. She's from well, I've been good. I mean, listen, if you said it's been good, right, you can't, if you're in a couple and you're talking about your relationship, you can't say, well, I've been good, therefore it's been good. He's the one who's constantly attacking me, right? He's the one who's constantly pulling it, pulling the furniture. He's the guy who tried to, who picked the fridge up and tried to insert it in me a couple of weeks ago, right? And then she says, I don't think you understand. He's the one who comes at me. Sarah, it's been 14 minutes into this fucking interrogation and already I can totally understand where George is coming from. I'm not defending it. I'm not saying what he does is right. I'm not saying it's, you know, it's not right to actually batter you with a curtain rod. What I am saying is, I understand. He comes at me. So it's either I flee or try to go upstairs and go to sleep. Hold on. When he attacks you, you either flee like a fucking Syrian refugee or you go upstairs and go to sleep. I, what, sort, what, what kind of useless attack? What, what is he actually doing that can be completely and utterly rendered, you know, completely you know, useless by simply going upstairs and going to sleep? Right? Is he scared of stairs? Right? Or do you think that if you're asleep that he, you won't notice? Are you trying to Elm Street, this motherfucker? You know? What do you mean, go upstairs and go to sleep? Just, you know, I'm just going to sit here. I bet she's the sort of person, when she plays hide and seek, she sits there with her hand over her eyes. Because she thinks, if I, if I can't see you, you can't see me. God, if only that were true. Oh. That's usually what it is. And I don't know if you talk to Brian about any of that, but most of the time when I sleep, I go over there. So. Right, but you're saying that you guys have been good, and when I asked you yesterday, there hasn't the last incident that you could remember was the curtain rod incident, which you said was a month ago. The last incident, yes, curtain rod Sunday. As we, spare the rod, not the ch spare the rod, spare the child, as the Bible I think fucking teaches us. And if not, there's probably something in there similar. So, give or take. Right. So, what do you mean by he comes after you? Like, he gets belligerently drunk. He gets belligerently drunk. Just to remind you, Sarah Boone is an alcoholic, right? And he, but he gets belligerently drunk. Not me. I get, you know, you only get drunk to the level where apparently you're so annoying that he tries to fucking attack you with the furniture. Belligerently, he's belligerently drunk, right? Just immensely, incontinently drunk all the time. Okay, folks, gonna get, I'm going to give the game away a little bit now. The next sentence, she says, is going to be a corker. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you all have looked through my phone yet. Oh, oh, Sarah, they have. They have, believe me. They have. And seen any of the pictures and the videos that I have taken. Mm -hmm. And the at one point, I started documenting everything. Okay. So you all will see in my pictures, bloody fingers, split foreheads. He split my nose. I've got this. I've, I've got this here, right? What? A leg, right? Got this thing here. I right? don't know what. Don't know what to do with it. Okay. So it's 
Then why are you still with him? Why is she still with him? Because quite evidently, he's the, one of the he's the only human being on planet Earth who could tolerate this woman for any amount of time. Presumably because he was the he was someone who happened to be as drunk as she was all the time. And that's the thing about about people who are addicts. If you've got a couple who are both addicts and they're addicted to the same thing. Trust me, they're fucking, you know, though the constant problems they have trying to murder each other will, you know, they will tolerate them knowing that, you know, their options are somewhat limited. And uh, in Sarah's case, they've been limited a little bit more now to the tune of one. Everybody asks me that. When I tell you guys this, I really love him. Like I do. And I feel like I can help him. Oh, oh, wait, here comes the fake crying. Are you ready for the fake crying? Just listen to it, because you can tell it's fake crying. A, because this woman is clearly a heartless psychopath who has never felt anything in her life. But she's doing the fake crying. I don't, people say, why are you... And then, and then suddenly her voice changes, goes back to normal. So you can tell it's just, it's just horseshit. Like, I feel like I could help him. <laughs> I feel like I can help. What are you going to do? Get a fucking exorcist? Which I did because he's come a really, he came a really long way. Yeah, oh dear, thanks to me, George has just, his life has just gone on an upward trajectory. You know, from where he was a few years ago. Look at him now. Dead, you know. That's been, okay, that's a minor, let's put a bit of a dampener on it, I will be honest, you know. It's not, it's not all been clean sailing, but trust me, I believe, I believe that with my help, he can still attain something. I don't know. She really hasn't thought this fucking through, is she? Right, she hasn't taken, she keeps forgetting that he's dead. Right, and she also keeps forgetting that she killed him, but you know. From where he was in Philadelphia to moving back to here and to dealing with everything else that he's been dealing I, with. I don't know what it says about Philadelphia. Imagine sitting there thinking that being dead in Florida. Like, he's dead in Florida, but a few years ago he was alive in Philadelphia. So, you know, baby steps. Mm -hmm. I've really helped him. I bailed him out of jail, what, three times? I've gone to every single hearing and every single arraignment, everything that I did so, for him. Uh, just a reminder, she bailed him out of prison. Yes, prison that he was doing, serving time because he beat the shit out of you. But more importantly, I went to every arraignment, every hearing. Presumably you had to, Sarah, because he was there for beating the shit out of you, right? Going to the hearing to watch your fiancé right, face domestic violence charges is not, in my opinion, some sort of like you going above and beyond the call of duty as a supportive wife. How is that helping him? You know? Gone to see all his public defenders. Go to the state. I've gone to the state. I went to the United Nations. I walked there. I walked there and I said, "Hear me out, people. A people of the United." I went to the Geneva Convention. I tried to fucking rugby tackle Henry Kissinger. Right. Every I did everything I could, but no, nothing. Nothing was ever good enough. I I did everything for him because I'm trying to help him because I have. A I had hope in him. And, and the fake crying comes back in because she realised she'd forgotten to fucking, she was crying. She went back to normal again. And don't worry, it'll jump in and out. This woman's got to, she can't keep her focus. And he was trying. He was really trying. Just, and then he starts to think about things and it just, I think he gets overwhelmed and then it's like... My God, what a fucking pro... You know, he's do he does fu he's doing really well, but unfortunately sometimes he stops and he thinks about things. And suddenly, the full, the full existential dread and horror and futility of his own fucking life and the bleak fucking, uh, you know, just everything about his existence. About, you know, the fact that he's with you, Sarah Boone. He's pissed all the time. He's in and out of fucking jail. And he's ended up with, uh, upside down, tied up in a fucking reef knot in a suitcase. Right? And now he's been... And, and his ex-missus, who's responsible for that, is now being pwned by Dick Coughlin. I don't think life can get much worse for jo poor old George at this point. 